Hey folks, this is Mr. Mega Man Fan. Like, share, comment, subscribe. You know all the things to do. And today I've got some exciting analog pocket news. There is a brand new core for PC Engine and Turbo Graphics. Before they even put up the pre-orders for the PC Engine Turbo Graphics adapter that you can slot into the back of your analog pocket, there is a core to play all your games natively on a micro SD card. And there's also a brand new version of Net Updater that includes this core and a bunch of updates to a bunch of other cores as well. So as you're looking at this footage, I'm going to switch over to some screen recordings of me doing the latest Net Update and show you how it works and how it looks. Now the Net Updater has reached version 2.5 and is available via Matt Pinella's GitHub page. I will link to that in the description of this video, but I'm also showing it to you on screen right here. P-A-N-N-E-L-L-A, Matt Pinella. You are a godsend for analog pocket owners. So what you want to do is go to the GitHub page, go down to where it says releases, click on 2.5, and then you're going to want to download the zip file for the computer that you're going to do the net update with. I'm doing it with a Mac, so that's what I'm downloading, but you can do it on any computer you want. Once you've downloaded it, you want to unzip the file and grab the pocket updater. That's what you're going to put at the root directory of your micro SD card, and I'll show you that next. If you have a previous version of the net updater on your micro SD card, just go ahead and right click it, put it in the trash, get rid of it, then drag the new version of the pocket updater to the root directory of your micro SD card and run it. Now, on most Macs, you're going to get a security warning saying you can't do that because it's not an officially licensed and well known developer. So you'll have to go into your system settings, go into your security tab, and give it permission to run. This happens with almost anything that you don't get through the Apple Store or a certified Apple developer, so don't worry about it. You're going to need to do this for any homebrew or custom app or any emulator of any kind. Like, using OpenEMU the first time on my Mac, I had to do this exact same thing. So just go ahead and grant it permission. As long as you know where it came from and what you're doing, you can trust it. Trust yourself. You know what you're doing. Then it will open a terminal and it will start the process and you can either just hit Y for every single one or you can pick and choose which ones you want. And I wanted it to go ahead and update any of the cores to the latest versions. So I just said yes to all of these, even the ones that I already had. But it's nice that you can pick and choose now if you don't want to do all of them at once. But why not? It takes no time at all to download these cores and install them on your micro SD card. So even if you're doing this for the first time, I recommend getting them all at once, especially with the arcade cores, because it downloads all the necessary files that you need to get it running. And the same with Neo Geo and anything else that you might have trouble with. If you try to piecemeal it yourself, it will provide all the BIOS files and all the assets that you need to get it running correctly on your pocket. Now what this doesn't provide is ROMs for NES, PC Engine, Sega Genesis, etc. You're going to need to supply those yourself and you're going to need to put them in the assets folder associated with that core, which is what I'm going to do right now with PC Engine. And once the files are on your micro SD, eject it and put it back into your pocket. Now because the net updater grabs the latest version of the firmware, when you boot up your analog pocket, it's going to go ahead and install that for you. So it'll make sure your pocket is up to date and the most compatible with any new cores that you've added. But go into Open FPGA after it's done and scroll down to the core you want. In this case, I want PC Engine. Click Run. And then the list of ROMs you put in the Assets folder will be there. So... That's what you saw at the beginning of this video, was me playing Bonk's Adventure. So far as I can tell, any of the Hue cards I've tried work flawlessly with this core, and I don't know of a way to play any CD-ROM-ROM or Super Graphics games, but that may come in a future update, so I wouldn't rule it out. I'm just saying, 
right now this is for hue cards that are either pc engine or turbo graphic 16 the same as the adapter that's being sold by analog let me skip ahead to another game since konami has been in the news a lot lately for their silent hill 2 remake and all the new silent hill properties they are going to release i thought like why not let's just look at a konami property so i went to parodius which is a favorite of mine that i'm glad i picked up very early on in pc engine collecting because at the prices it goes for now i'm not sure if i would make that same decision so sometimes it pays to be an early adopter but if you've never had a chance to play it before maybe get a rom and try it not saying pirate it i'm just saying try it and see if you would want to pay what parodius goes for then make that decision accordingly once you've sampled it using something like an analog pocket or an emulator but for me this is one of my favorite shoot 'em ups because it's whimsical but it's also a good challenge it strikes a nice balance between being a parody of games like twin b and gradius and also just being fun to play here's another fun but expensive shooter you might want to try before you buy Superstar Soldier. I think this goes for over $100 loose and even more complete, so I was happy to get it through the Wii's virtual console before that shut down, and so I kind of feel justified playing a ROM of this game when I already own a licensed version that I've paid for at least once, but your mileage may vary. I'm not telling you the ethics of what to do or not to do. I'm just telling you that thanks to the net updater, this core is now supported and part of the analog pocket. Since we're all here, I thought I'd show off one other thing, the analog pocket carrying case. As you can see, it's a little scuffed up because I've already put it into use. I didn't have a chance to show this off in a previous video, but I found it's the best solution possible for carrying around your analog pocket. It has a hinge at the top that you push in gently to release the clamshell from one half to the other, and then you put in your pocket lining it up with the four screw holes on the back to the four tabs in the case itself. If you line it up correctly, it fits perfectly. It doesn't wiggle around. And since it's clear, you could even use it as a display stand if you wanted. But I just use it to keep the screen clean and protect the analog pocket when I'm lugging it around. So for me, it's a really nice fit. I tried a case that was designed for ruggedness and durability that was recommended by mad little pixel but i found that even with the foam padding inside the pocket kind of slid around and fell down in it so i actually use it for my neo geo pocket color now instead and i only use the official analog pocket carrying case for the pocket itself is it worth it maybe not if you're paying 25 dollars shipping for it by itself but if you were already ordering a pocket you might want to throw one in Anyway, this has been Mr. Mega Man Fan with an analog pocket update on the PC Engine Core and a brief look at the analog pocket carrying case. Like, share, comment, subscribe. You know all the things to do. I hope you've enjoyed this update, and I'll see you again when there's more analog pocket news or some new retro topic I want to cover or just some pickups that I've made.